Hello and welcome to Sim Radio here on the Sisters in Music Network. It's Monday Music Madness and you're tuned in to Mixing It with Nikki Chris. This is Nikki and in case you don't know anything about me, I'm a singer-songwriter from Raleigh, North Carolina. My show celebrates women in the music and entertainment industry, providing an avenue for them to showcase their talent. Our motto, Sisters in Music, Together We Are Stronger. My guest today is a singer-songwriter from Vail, North Carolina. Her voice is smooth and passionate with a sweetness and power that merge seamlessly into satisfaction for the listener. Her first EP project titled Playing With Fire was released in April 2021. She is currently working on a country pop album titled Songbird, which the single was released this past summer. Songbird is a two-part collection of songs that shows her growth as a writer and is sonically much different from her earlier projects. She has just been recognized locally for her songwriting and was named One to Watch by National Songwriters Association in the spring of 2021. Please join me in welcoming the awesome Jennifer Alvarado. Jennifer, welcome to Mixing It. How are you? I am great, and it's it's great to be able to talk with you, Nikki. So thanks for having me on. You are so so welcome, and I'm really excited to share a fellow North Carolinian with everyone, <laughs> so we'll get right to it. Why don't you tell us about how would you describe your music? So I've always had a heart for country music. That's always been sort of my core, um, my core sound. I, I think when you're from North Carolina, you can't help but have a twang to some degree and so it's hard to get away from that twang and so I think no matter what I do I'll always edge toward country and plus it's just deep in my roots so I like to say that I'm sort of like 90s country Dina Carter that kind of thing with my storytelling but then I have like this this boldness and bluntness of Elena Smarset. Ah, that's a really good comparison. I like that. I like that <laughs> a lot. And as you yeah. obviously can tell, I don't have a twang, so I'm not originally from North Carolina, but that's okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would yes, say yes, yes. even where I am, I mean, I I definitely have a twang. Like there's no there's no fighting that one. But I, even the people that are around me in Vail probably have more of a twang than I do. So yeah, it's definitely one of those things of this area. Yes, I would definitely definitely agree with you. Awesome. <laughs> We said that your music is a mixture of country pop. I know that you also throw some blues in there every now and then. You know, that reflects like an eclectic blend of influences. So who would you say are some of your musical inspirations or influences? Number one would definitely be Reva, Reva McIntyre. I started following her when I was probably about nine. And there was just something about her. And then, you know, I started going to her concerts and everything and seeing, like, how she's able to entertain. And then, of course, like, she started with her television show and Broadway and all these other avenues. And so I think the business side of it and how she was able to sort of navigate all that just really just really spoke to me. And I thought, okay, like, if you're going to do this, you need to be able to – to, to be able to navigate and have that grit and determination to do what you got to do to make it work. So I, definitely her. But growing up, like, I, I can remember listening to Patsy Cline and all of the, the classic country artists, um, Conway Twitty, when I would be at my grandmother's house because that's what they listened to. So there was definitely that. That was an influence. And then my mom loved, like, Journey, Chicago, and Tom Petty and all of that. So I just, I always, I think I always gravitated toward the storytellers, the ones that 
you could just kind of feel everything that they were singing about um, and knew that they had experienced it in some way. And then, you know, as I got older, I sort of got into grunge and the pop scene and even contemporary Christian music. Contemporary Christian was a huge influence. That was actually the very first CD, CD that I put out in 2015 was contemporary Christian. That's where I started. So that's always been an influence. And then as I got older, you know, late high school, college years, I studied classical voice. And so I had opera and some of that is also an influence. So yeah, I, I'm very eclectic, but I think I've always been fascinated by the technique of people and their spin on something and how you can take a song and five different people can sing it five different ways or perform it five different mm-hmm. ways and it be it come off completely different. You can slow it down, you can speed it up, you can give it a different beat and it becomes a whole other thing. And so that's just always been really cool to me when it comes to music is how somebody their their own perception and their own way of, of conveying that song. I love that. And you're exactly correct because I actually am getting ready to release at least one cover. And it's funny because when I was doing my research, I was mm-hmm. researching, so how have other people done this song, right? You know, and it's, it's mm, you run yeah. into all these different interpretations of that song from an artistic expression perspective. So it's, it's, I can definitely, definitely relate to that. Going back to interpretations, I think it's, it's the song blue, that blue, la da dee up, whatever, that thing that used to be like this electronic song that came out from maybe Eiffel 66. I'm, I'm probably have that completely wrong, but it was like this little pop song that, had this really weird little beat and everything. And I remember not too long ago, I found a cover of somebody who redid the song and actually slowed it down to where you could actually hear the lyrics and and hear how sad the lyrics really are. And it completely changed the song. And so that's just always intrigued me with it. I do that actually in my live show. I I, uh, took 500 Miles by the Proclaimers and I've slowed it down to make it into like this little love song um, that, you know, isn't just the upbeat, fun thing that everybody knows. Before we get to one of the songs that you did bring with you for us to share with everyone, you must have uh, made a couple of big decisions over the past year. I know a lot of people have. So what's one of the biggest decisions that you have made over the past year and why was it such a big deal? I think the biggest one was actually leaving my nine to five job because I was working as a services navigator for a community center for a a women's shelter. And I was part of the day shelter and, you know, I was there from eight to four or five every day. And I, I chose after I went to Nashville for something and, and kind of interviewed for, for an opportunity. And I really realized in that process of if you're going to do this, you need to do it. You need to stop dividing your time between this and that and everything else and actually focus on this. And so, you know, my husband and I, we talked about it. So last uh, July, August, I made the decision to step away from what I was doing and to actually jump into music full time and really look at this as, you know, my business and my brand and, and, and trying to push what I'm doing. I mean, that's definitely been the biggest decision over the past couple of years, but I think it's just the investment in yourself and realizing that like, if you're really serious about this and granted I have, an amazing spouse that supports me and wants to be there for me and wants me to pursue my dreams. And and so I'm very lucky in that. But for me, like I've always made music kind of the, I'll do it when I have time. And I think to be able to really do it full time and give it, you know, all the, the attention that it actually needs to work, it does require full time. And so I'm just glad to be able to, perceive that. 
That's awesome. Shout out to your husband for being the supportive partner. That's awesome. And that is a huge decision. And it's funny because I've actually had similar um, conversations with some of my other guests where, you know, like in a pivotal moment in their life. And it's been recent where they've been like, you know what, it's either now or never, and I've got to walk away and start doing this full time. And it's scary, right? It's really, really scary to do that. But I think it's, yes, and it's fantastic that you have a support system because that's what we all need. We all need a support system because it is a crazy career. (laughs) We all know that it's, uh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and I think depending on, like, how you've grown up, um, I I don't know about you, but I grew up in a very practical home where it was like, this is what you do. Like, you go to college, you get your job, you work nine to five, you know, in corporate America, and then, you know, that's just what you do. And you stay at this place for 30 years, then you retire. So that was hard for me to sort of let go of. That, That just, I guess, normalcy kind of thought that I had grown up with and and realized that it doesn't have to look that way for everybody and it shouldn't it should it should be about what makes you happy and what you know makes your heart feel like it's being fulfilled so yeah no and I I do definitely relate to that Uh, that's how I was raised you do this, you do that. I was also raised in a home where it was very gender specific. Girls went to school to be one of two things. And, you know, you get married and you don't work anymore and you're supposed to be housewife. (laughs) Don't do any of these other things, right? So, um, yeah, certainly can relate to that a little bit. All right. Let's get on to music. Let's change the subject a little bit. So, uh, okay. Tell us about one of the songs that you brought with you to share. Could you explain what Rock This Way is all about? Yeah. So Rock This Way, I actually wrote it with like four or five other songs one day. I had been in this period of just like couldn't write anything. And I sat down and just started kind of challenging myself with like anytime I get stuck and get writer's block, I try to give myself challenges that hopefully will inspire something. And this is one where I was like, okay, I love classic rock music. I need an upbeat rock song because I'd written all these sad songs and it was like depressing and I needed something fun. So I sat down to write it and I thought, okay, I'm going to see how many different songs I can kind of give a nod to and, and pay homage to in some kind of way. And so I just sort of started listing out some of my favorite songs And and sort of based it around that, trying to sort of pull these references a little bit, but where it would actually still make sense in a song. Awesome. Well, we are going to play this for everyone, and I think that you certainly accomplished what you set out to do. So this is Rock This Way by Jennifer Alvarado. Down the track, too scared to look forward, to want to look back like a bird free falling in a neon sky. We were born to take it easy on a sweet slow ride, like a burned out shoebox to plays rock and roll. Your love soothes my soul. We're gonna rock this way to the beat, steady as a drum. We're gonna prove us. Right and prove them wrong And we keep on keeping on Like your favorite song playing on the radio And sing out at the top of your lungs We're gonna rock this way To love Don't let the sound of your wheels Wanna turn and never drive you crazy You gotta keep on Never stop believing and holding me, baby Walk this way while you give me a kiss Can you handle this? 
never gonna rock this way to the beat, steady as a drum, we're gonna prove us right and prove along, we keep on keeping on like a favorite song playing on the radio and sing out of the top of your lungs, we're gonna rock this way to love. blended rock vibe. You can certainly hear some of the influences that you drew from for that song. So very, very well done. It loved it. Absolutely mm. love it. And I know our listeners are going to love it too. Good. I'm glad. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they will. They will. They will. Of your own music, do you have uh-huh. a favorite and if so, can you pin down why it's your favorite? Oh, goodness. Honestly, I'm between a few songs, but I'm going to keep it to between, like, two, if that's okay. I would say my song, Paris, because it was one of those songs that I sat down to write, and it came out exactly the way I wanted it to. I wanted that song to be about just loss of love and is based around the premise of Paris, Tennessee. And of course, like Paris, France is the city of love and all that kind of stuff. But I wanted it to be about Paris, Tennessee, where you basically fall out of love. Not a great thing for Paris, Tennessee, but you get my point. And so I, I wanted it to be about that. And really the bridge of that song kind of just brought it all together. And, and so I just, I love that one. The other song that I feel like represents me maybe the best and and just sort of what I want to say with music is Filthy Water. I wrote that song after just a really rough period of time where, honestly, I was left questioning myself and whether I even wanted to keep pursuing music. And that song is kind of my statement back to a lot of people who just really hurt me and, and and left me in just a really bad state of mind. And so that song is kind of my statement of just saying, listen, like, yeah, you may have won this battle, but you didn't win the war. And in the end, like, truth will always come out. And I think that that is what I want to use my platform to say, too, is that, you know, there's so many people that are hurting out there because of this injustice or whatever. And and just be that encouragement and that hope to people of, you know, the guilty party is not always going to be the one that's reigning. Um, at some point, like, truth will be seen and, and just keep, keep 
keep fighting the good fight. Like, keep living up to what you're supposed to be doing and what you know to be right. And that light will always will always overshadow the darkness. Oh, I love that. I love that. We didn't bring that song to share with you. So everybody go check that one out because I have a feeling it's <laughs> going to be really, really good. It's not one that I listen to, but we're going to tell them to check that one out too. And we'll we'll share your website with everybody at the end too so that they know where to check out all of okay. your, your music. And stuff. Yeah, I'll send it to you so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, awesome. Great. Great, great, great. What do you feel separates a good musician artist from a great musician or artist? I think humility. I also think willingness to keep growing because I think a lot of times, like, your talent can get you into it in, through the door. It can get you in the room. But work ethic. And, and realizing that you don't know everything and that you constantly need to be growing and getting better and that there's always something to be learned. Like, I feel like that's what keeps you in, in the room. Um, and that keeps you humble to, to a huge degree. And, you know, I, I just believe that humility is a huge thing because if you're, if you're proud and you're arrogant, you miss so much. And and you can't be moldable and teachable like you can when you go in with this attitude of, of humility and the fact that you don't know everything. I think you are now like my most favorite interview ever because that is just so, so, no, I'm serious. I think that is just so spot on and, you know, I see it so often, yeah. it, it, you know, like daily, weekly with with artists and musicians, yeah. Natalie and I like to sit there and say, no divas allowed, right? You know, I mean, yeah, obviously, exactly. you know, our, our show and our organization focuses on women, so we picked the, you know, the diva word because of, of yeah, women. Exactly. But, I mean, it, it really is is that, right? And you're exactly correct. And, and when we get to talking a little bit about your songwriting process, there's a question that I ask all of my songwriters and I'm going to ask you it as well. And I do it on purpose, you know, because I don't know everything. And I like to learn from other songwriters, right? And where other people draw their inspiration from and, and things like that. And humility is so important. Oh my God. That is like the best answer ever. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Love yeah, it. Love it. Thank you. All right. Well, you're welcome. So let's hit on real quick before we take a partner in podcasting break. Tell me what's the best piece of advice that another musician ever gave you? Well, they did not give it to me directly, but one thing that I have always kept in the back of my mind, I think it was little Jimmy Dickens. When I was growing up, I heard him say that the minute he no longer gets nervous with with being out on the stage or playing is the day he quits, and I've always kept that. Now, I probably took it to extreme <laughs> with my perfectionism and my anxiety, However, with that said, I think that there's something to be said about just that little bit of anxiety. I, I don't even want to call it anxiety. It's just that apprehension of before you go out. And, and I think it's almost humility in, in that way because it helps you to remember why you're doing what you're doing and that it's still important. And I think when it becomes that monotony and it becomes just you walk out there and you have no emotional ties to it, you, you don't need to do it. Because there's a million other people that would actually be putting their whole heart into that moment and just be willing to do whatever for the opportunity. And so I, I think that that's where I come from with that statement is that I never want to take for granted any opportunities that are given to me because I know that there's so many other people out there that are so much that are able and and willing and just haven't been afforded that yet. So I I just never want to take anything for granted. Great piece of advice and a great share from the person that 
it not instructed you, but afforded you the opportunity to learn that tidbit. So awesome. All right. Great place for us to take a short break here from a word from one of our partners in podcasting. This is my buddy, Tim, from Front Range Radio. We'll be right back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris here on the Sim Radio. Front Range Radio, playing a variety of indie music, a 24-7 music festival for your ears. You can find Front Range Radio at frontrangeradio.net. And we're back on Mixing It with Nikki Chris here on the Sim Radio Network. And my guest, Jennifer Alvarado. All right. Songwriting process. We're going to get into the nitty and gritty. Why don't you take us through your songwriting process? What's it like? Every day is a little different. (laughs) So usually I get a lot of inspiration when I'm drying my hair and when I'm in the shower. It's probably TMI, (laughs) but that's... That's like usually where I start getting an idea. And I think it's because I finally like slow down long enough to think about it. So that's sort of where it starts. I usually start with a melody of some sort or like there's some little tagline or just statement that I'm like, that'd make a good song. And then, and then I kind of build from that. I always generally start with a hook and that hook leads to like, I try to base everything around that hook and coming back to it. But, yeah, like, if I'm having writer's block, there is no rhyme or reason to my writing. I will literally go pick up a dictionary and find the most obscure word I can find and write a song around it just to get myself out of my funk that I'm in. Oh, I like that. Hmm. That's a good tip or trick. My next question was, what do you do when you you get writer's block? Okay, so now you go and you pick a word out of a dictionary, which is a good tip or trick. That's really, really good. And I may I may even use that on my little Monday tip or trick section, because that's a good one. <laughs> one of the questions that um, I do ask all of my songwriters is, do mm-hmm. you have any tips or tricks to share for any of our budding songwriters out there. So go to the dictionary, pick out a word, but anything else that may be any type of process that you consistently follow or another good golden nugget, like you just said, when you get writer's block, maybe go to the dictionary, pick a random word and so on and so forth. Anything else that you could share? Yeah. I mean, as far as writer's block, I've also gone and asked like some random person to give me an idea. And and I'll write a song. Like I like I like the challenge of songwriting. That probably sounds weird, but I like being challenged by stuff. And so I used to have a mentor that literally would just text me random like concepts and words and be like, I bet you can't write a song about this. And I'm that person that if you tell me I can't do it, I'm gonna die trying to prove you wrong. And so <laughs> I would come up with these random songs about everything under the sun just to prove a point um, that, yes, you can write a song about it. And, like, for example, my song, Fine, I remember this person asked me about the word fine, and they said something about, for a woman, it always means, like, 10,000 different things. And I was just like, actually, no, it doesn't. Like, fine, if, if the woman says fine, things are not fine. And so that's literally what my song is, is based around, was that concept of, yeah, I'm telling everybody that it's fine, but I'm not fine, I'm falling apart. So I would just say, you know, look for random things, base it around characters. I have a song that I wrote about Ralph and the motorcycle and that he's always leaving, basically, but you wouldn't know that. I have a song that I wrote about my husband's kidney stones, which is probably really morbid, but hey. But again, you wouldn't know that it's about his kidney stones. So, yeah, uh, I'm very random with that. Yeah, but I you know what? That's really real. That's really good. That's that's really great because it, it shows it shows versatility and it, it, it shows, you know, that you have the ability to be creative, right? So, you know, it's yeah. awesome. I love the give me a random idea, like going up to somebody, even if it's somebody you don't know. Hey, I need a songwriting idea. <laughs> give me a word, right? You know, I mean, I don't think I've yeah. ever done that, but, you know, I, it's, I think it's great. I love, I this is the reason that I asked this question because 
I love hearing what other people do to generate creativity because it may be something that I've never even thought of, right? And that's how you learn and grow and expand. It's that, you know, concept of I don't know it all. I think two pieces of advice I'd probably give is, one, never think that you're being too specific with something because details in a song can pull you in. And even if you think it's a detail that nobody else can relate to, it's those small little details that sometimes really, like, nudge somebody's memory. And so I I would say don't shy away from that. Don't make it so broad that nobody can relate to it. The other thing is don't try to manipulate where the song's going. Like, a lot of times somebody will say, I want to write a fast song or I want to, I want to write, you know, a song about X, Y, Z. And maybe that's not where the song needs to go. And and that's something that I had to like check my pride at the door with and realize that, you know, it's a creation. Like it's, it's a creative process. It's a lot of times like a song has its own, it has its own way of feeling through it. And so if, if you're trying to manipulate where you think it should go versus just letting it flow naturally, it's not going to work. Like it, it's going to sound like some kind of forced whatever, and it's not going to have the power um, that a naturally flowing creation would have. I agree with that 110%. I have been there and then you changed. So and it's a, <laughs> it is a hard thing to change because you get your mind set on, I need to have a fast song for yes. this EP, right? You've got, some, I need to have a fast song for this EP. And you're forcing it and forcing it. And then you're like, you know what? This is crap. It's not going to work. Yes. And then if you, you know, I've had to do that. I've literally had to do that. I had to step back and be like, you know what? You just see where this goes. So very good advice. All right. Take us through Curious. Tell us about that one, and then we'll put that on for everyone to hear. Okay. I wrote that song back in December, early December, and basically, like, that was a very quick write. And then the studio process was even faster. So I sat down to write it, and I I had been watching this movie where – these two characters basically were just, they, they wanted to be friends, but there was all this curiosity built around their relationship, sort of, and they kept falling into situations where they just kept falling for each other. And um, so the the word curious actually came to my head, and I thought, yeah, I want to build a song around this. Um, and so it was a very quick write and I sort of had all of the the little layers and everything already in my head and I laid down just a really rough scratch track and sent it to my producer and said what do you think about this and we literally sat down and recorded it that day and added the drums after the fact and yeah so I mean that that was probably one of the fastest songs I've ever written I love those because they usually mean that they're really, really good, (laughs) at least in my experience. Anything that I've heard people say, I wrote this very, very quick, it's usually one of the ones that you're always like, ah, this is a really great song. So let's pop this in for everybody. This is Curious by Jennifer Alvarado. I can see you looking at me from across the room. With every single glance, I get a little more confused You shouldn't want me, I shouldn't want you All of our reasons, we follow the rules But all I keep dreaming about is me with you
versatility as a songwriter so excellent another wonderful song jennifer very proud of you love your music so Mm -hmm. i'm excited that we're sharing these with everybody okay so before we talk about what's on tap for the next six to twelve months and and kind of close out our interview I'm Mm -hmm. sure that the pandemic had some impact on you in terms of performing. So how did it impact you, right? I mean, nobody could really go and do anything. You know, I know a lot of people were doing, you know, live events online, so to speak. You know, how did it affect you personally? So, yeah, I did do a lot of online events. That's actually what started me getting online with different writers groups and stuff like that. I think for me, yes, it, it, it bothered me to not be able to actually go out. It bothered me more, I think, to not be able to go and worship at church and be able to lead worship. That was probably the harder thing because that's what I'd been used to for the most part. So with the pandemic, you know, I'm stuck at home and I have these songs that are sitting on a shelf. And so for me, it pushed me to actually take a chance and put them out there. So in some ways, like the pandemic is is really what pushed me to start doing something. And then from that, I think it also made me realize, like, how much of your life are you going to waste not trying to do this? And, and so that was really during the period of time where I started thinking about, okay, Do I want to do this full time? And started having those conversations. And I think, too, because I was willing to, like, go out on a limb. Because my other thing, too, this sounds really dumb in a way, but I didn't have some of the people that were so critical because I was stuck at home. Had I released it during a period of, like, open time where I was then going and being around these critical people, I probably would have, like, 
hid away and not released anything else. But because I was stuck at mm. home and didn't have these constant, like, naysayers around me, it was like, I'm free to do whatever I want to do. Like, yay, here we go. So for me, that period of time was actually very helpful because I started seeing, like, there's all there's this whole rest of the world out there that's actually supportive and actually likes what I'm doing. So, yeah, I, I'm going to say, honestly, it, it was probably a really big period of growth for me. And, of course, there's things that, that you know, performances and, and shows that had to be moved around and all of that kind of stuff. And, and I hate that part, but there were so many positives that actually came from it that I, I can't shun it away by any means. Um, and I'm actually grateful for a lot of what happened. I love that. And to all the naysayers and all the critical people, <laughs> yeah, bye, karma, it comes back around, <laughs> let me tell you, it really, really does. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. All right. Anything else, final words that you would like to share with our listeners? Maybe what's coming up in the next six to 12 months, any performances, more new music, where they can find you on social media. Tell us, give us a, you know, nitty gritty 30 second. Hey, this is what I got going. Okay. Um, I would say the best place to look is on my website, jenniferalvarado.com. There's a tour schedule on there with with dates for the rest of the year, and and I'm currently starting to do 2023. So, yeah. And then socials, Instagram is Jennifer Alvarado Music, um, if you want to follow me on there. Um, I'm on all the digital platforms, so definitely check that out if you would. As far as this coming up, I'm finishing part two of Songbird, so that will be out late fall. And I'm hoping to get a holiday project out this year. Ooh, yay. Love holiday music. I keep saying I want to do a holiday album, too, and then I never get around to it because there is so much opportunity, even though it's a short time crunch of the year, right? But there is so much opportunity with holiday music, like especially in – think licensing and things like that because they're always looking for holiday music, right? Because they make all these right. films and movies and TV shows and, and things like that. So, oh, yay. I hope you get your holiday holiday Thanks. project done. <laughs> Let me know. Keep me in the loop. Okay. I will. Awesome. All right. Well, I would like to thank my awesome, awesome guest, Jennifer Alvarado, for taking the time to chat with me today. It has really been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Mixing It. On behalf of all of us at Sim Radio, this is Nikki Chris. Until next time, keep on mixing it.